the most damaging podcast i think to ooh, date. Ooh, guys this is a lie this is okay so he doesn't realize it right now when he was saying i'm surprised that this video is still up by the way okay i'm actually not surprised but you know how he said the line in yasir Ghadi's video became trending and became so damaging and it's keep being replayed and over and over again when he said there are holes in the standard narrative right so now He's trying to address how damaging that was. And he doesn't realize it. Look at his face. He doesn't realize it that now his video and this line by itself is going to do exactly what he's trying to avoid. Okay? Because he, because a lot, here's the thing, as much as we were following this whole Gaudi thing and the drama that it caused, a lot of Muslims either didn't know about this or were denying how significant of a of a damage this whole leak of Yasser Qadi's video by Muhammad Hijab, Muhammad Hijab and Yasser Qadi video was, right? They were denying how significant this is, right? And how damaging to Islam this whole thing was, right? So now he's about to say something that by itself becomes the second silver bullet that is going to be used for this whole thing because he's a Muslim and he's like, Take it seriously by people, and his agenda is to be like not, he's not anti-Islam, okay? And he's like a Muslim Dawa guy. And he is saying, this guy is saying, what is he gonna say? Listen to this. Muhammad Hijab has him on again. And this has to be probably the the most damaging podcast, I think, to date in regards to the Durat and the the destruction it caused. The most damaging podcast to date with regards to the destruction it caused. That destruction became a lot more because of this line. Because not only the, the destruction was caused, now it's also verified by the Muslim Dawa people that it was extremely destructive to Islam. So he is like criticizing Muhammad Hijab for having a podcast on, having this interview that was contributed so much to the destruction of Islam, not realizing that he is doing exactly that himself right now. You guys understand what I'm trying to say? Because... So far, the people that have been, so it has been very destructive and they've realized it, but they haven't been admitting it. Okay. We, like the people that are anti Islam, like myself and many, many other people, they have been saying how destructive this is. What this part, what this video did was a verification by the Muslim community itself of how destructive, and that, that verification of it makes the whole situation even more destructive. So he's doing exactly what he's criticizing Muhammad Hijab for. Yes, the Streisand effect. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we love the Streisand effect. Exactly. Oh, you guys find their Twitter handle? Sorry, I missed some of your some of your live chats. Wow, guys, thank you so much for that. It's called the Trans Muslim. Guys, go give her a follow. I can't follow her because I'm suspended from Twitter. I'm going to get my Twitter account back. Don't give up on me on Twitter. But somebody who's still on Twitter, please go let her know that. Send her this video, when it's, the link to this video, and tell her that, look, we so desperately want her on Atheist Republic, the trans Muslim. Okay, let's continue. And it just really goes to show that when you have a platform and you're reaching potentially hundreds of thousands of people, it's really a big deal who you give a platform to, what mm -hmm. you talk about, what information you put out there. Because Yasser Qadi came on this time, and subhanAllah, if people couldn't tell from his clear language about his usul being messed up. He, um, usul, uh, I think the best translation for usul is principles. Oh, yes. Yeah, Prince, I think principles is a good translation. So he's like, he's saying, if you can't tell by what Yasser Qadi was saying that his principles were out of whack, 
And basically by by the principles being out of whack, he's saying that it didn't agree with the standard narrative. Yeah, exactly that. We've just seen him progress and progress. So anything that doesn't agree with the standard narrative, they see it as problematic. And just expose himself, but then expose himself because he's telling you, he's telling the people, he's say, he was saying things that are true. He was telling you what you need, what more Muslims need to hear, not what you want to hear. And if you hear something that you don't want to hear, you say their principles is misplaced, their usuls being misplaced. Guys, is, is principle a good translation? So, are you here? Is principle a good translation for usul? He goes on the Muhammad Hijab's platform and starts giving the preservation of the... By the way, this throwing, like, you know, he's speaking English. You know, the, if you are a Dawah person, okay, and you're not an Arab, you just have to know around 50 Arabic words. I'm just guessing. Oh, you guys are saying yes. Yes. Okay, yes. Okay. If you guys want, if you come, if you want to come off as an authentic... Uh, authentic true dawa guy just rem just memorize like just you have to learn like around 50 ish i think i'm just guessing arabic words and just make sure every once in a while instead of saying that you're speaking english but just use the arabic version of that instead of the english and then you just come oof oof brother the brother has so much knowledge, Islamic knowledge. Look at the Ara oh, look at the Arabic words he's dropping left and right. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, look at that. All that Islamic knowledge. That's how it works. Oh, you guys are yes, yeah. Principles. <laughs> Quran. Question. Like, I'm speechless. I mean, not only, not Speechless. only did that happen, but both Muhammad Hijab and Yasser Qadi consciously, after the fact, posted it and advertised it. It wasn't like it was a slip of the tongue on. He was like, these people, they're so, they're so dumb that when the interview happened, they didn't realize how damaging this is. Like they actually went out and something so damaging, they publicly posted it and promoted it. Like that's how stupid these people are. Live television, like they were live streaming and they got caught up in the moment. No, they no. recorded it. No, no. They uploaded it. <sighs> they advertised it. I mean, if this doesn't, if this doesn't show you the absence of hikmah. The absence of hikmah. Hechma, <laughs> guys, this line. Okay, the first line was the most damaging part that I highlight. The sec, this line is became. <laughs> now this second part. Okay, how do you translate hikma? Hikma, you think wisdom is that good translation? Okay, so that this second line became so popular. Now you know when Yasser Qadi. Okay, so there are right now there are some popular lines coming out of this whole dawa drama okay the holes in the narrative is number one uh ali dawa saying he's that he's proud of um the fact that there's executions for people like me like ex-muslims uh he's saying oh, we're proud of it that that line has become like very popular they're making songs and remixes out of that and now this is another one okay the absence of hikmah or oh, wisdom was a good translation Yes, wisdom, yeah. Oh, the absence, the absence. Like, if this doesn't show you the absence of hikmah. Guys, I wish I could play the music, the, the songs for you that they made out of this. I don't know if I'm going to get a copyright strike. But just go like, this is so good. Yes. <laughs> yeah, wick, hikmah. Yeah, that, here's, here's the Arabic uh, version of it. Of wisdom. Oh, see, you say wisdom already. So why didn't you just say with absence of hikmah? If this doesn't show you the absence of hikmah. Guys, we need to add this to our vocabulary. If you guys, every anytime we now say something dumb in the live, in the live chat, I'm just going to be like, look at, like I'm going to highlight it, okay? Like, I'm just going to highlight something. 
I'm just using. I'm just so I'm just using it as a as a sample. I'm like, look at this comment. Look at the absence of Hikma in this comment. Okay, this this is we're gonna do that from now. Okay, this is a thing now. <laughs> of wisdom in somebody's dawa. The absence of Hikma in someone's dawa. I don't. What can I even say? You know, ever since that podcast, Paula, those of us who are involved in da'wah, like myself specifically, I'll talk from my own experience. The amount of comments I get from Christians, from people who are against Islam and they want to sow seeds of doubts in the minds of Muslims, over and over and over again, they use speech in quotes from Yasser Qadi from Muhammad Hijab's podcast mm. to try and do that. It's like every single day on social media. The reason I embraced Islam fundamentally in the very Ooh, beginning. Listen to this, okay? So he just told you that that interview between Muhammad Hijab and Yasser Ghadi is being used over and over and over again by people that wish Islam harm, like me, okay? Like people like me, okay? He's like, this has become such an ammunition. It's, this is like a bullet in the chamber. Like the, You have given them what they couldn't have produced in decades you have given them that like he keeps since he keeps seeing that interview being used against islam or everywhere so he's like you guys basically gifted this to them okay and now he's also going to admit by the way oh yeah i'm going to tell you by the way guys I, I don't know for the people who are new here muhammad hijab is the same guy who's responsible for us um for our blasphemy art project and the fact that you know we have been all over the news in india and um the fact that now we have lawyers in india bringing our uh, drawings all the way up to the supreme court of india as a way to change the laws on social media in all of india okay so yeah that so that that's that's what that's hap that's how that's happening so this is all connected everything is connected somehow did you guys know that muhammad hijab is like the person who who ended up being the reason why we became famous in india <laughs> 